My lecture today is B.B. King and, and Black Rivers History. The king of the blues, B.B. King, passed away. And this lecture that we're doing today is an honor to B.B. King. B.B. King said in his autobiography that the, he has two strikes. One, or he said he was double black. B.B. King faced all kind of racial hardships. He faced all kind of challenges. But yet the man stuck true to his blues. He stuck true to the culture. In fact, B.B. King is known as the black cultural ambassador. He is a cultural ambassador of the blues music because he used his skills, he used his ability, he used his passion for the blues to promote the blues worldwide and B.B. King went into over 80 countries. On September the 16th, 1925, a man was born in the area of Indianola, Mississippi. His name was Riley B. King. Riley B. King was known in Memphis, Tennessee as Bill Street Blues Boy. Bill Street Blues Boy later became the name B.B. King. Now, see, B.B. King came to Memphis around 19, the late 1940s, around, say, and around 1949, something happened. Actually, it happened in 1947. In 1947, they opened a country and, country and western radio station called WDIA, but the owner of the station, a guy by the name of Burke Ferguson, tried something that had never been done before in America. They would format a radio station for African Americans. In 1949, they formatted the radio station, WDIA, and they made it the first black radio station in the nation. And there was B.B. King of Blues, Bill Street Blues Boy, who later became B.B. King, he had, was a disc jockey on the show. He could play his music on the show. And he was in the Mid-South area and became very popular. So there, there's B.B. King becoming very popular. Now, we come, ladies and gentlemen, see there was a culture of music. You had Ma Rain in. You had just so many different people. Ferry Lewis, Memphis was the cultural mecca of black music. We call ourselves in Memphis the heart. Uh, this is the soul of America because when it comes down to the soul, when it comes down to the blues, when it comes down to the raw gut music, Memphis, Tennessee is the place. Now, he decided he was going to leave WDI radio station and he got a bus. And the driver of that bus was a man by the name of Cato Walker who was a friend and relative of B.B. King. Now the reason that I tie this in is because there was Cato and then there was Cato Jr. who later became the band director and saxophone player for B.B. King. And the reason that I bring the name Cato in, because Cato Walker drove B.B. King's bus. He didn't live in Memphis anymore, but he lived, the family lived in a section called Glenview, and Cato's mother and the father were, Cato's mother and my mother were best friends, and he used to drive B.B. King's bus. But... We were all tied into B.B. King because as a kid coming up, B.B. King was a part of my heart. B.B. King was a part of my soul because I saw the people enjoying the music of B.B. King. 
Now, as we begin to go, B.B. King had that bus and B.B. King toured all over America. And when, the, in fact, in 1954, at Sun Studios, there was a white man. This white man recorded a song by a black artist. Now, the song they recorded was made in 1946. It was a song by a black man called Big Arthur Kudak. Big Arthur Kudak was from a place called Money, Mississippi. Well, this white boy was a little kid, 13 or 10 years old, used to listen to Big Arthur Kudak, and he's a white guy who used to go over to West Memphis, used to drive a dump truck, who graduated from school in Memphis, who moved from Tupelo. This white boy became Elvis Aaron Presley, the king of rock and roll, who recorded his first song in 1954. So in 1955, they used to have what is called the WDIA Goodwill Review. And you would see a picture of a B.B. King who was born in 1925 and an Elvis Presley who was born in, say, 1935, I believe. So they're about 10 years older, but Elvis used to hang out with the black folk. Elvis learned the black music. Now, Elvis did his thing with rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen, and B.B. King went all over the world, ended up going into over 80 countries. He became the ambassador of the blues music. He became a Memphis ambassador. When they started rock and roll and they started doing music, people like Jimi Hendrix and other musicians around the world, those guys in London would listen to B.B. King's music and he made a big influence all around the world. And from 1925 up until his death, B.B. King became the cultural ambassador for black people because he stood strong and he promoted his music. What I want other African Americans to understand that B.B. King was true to the cause. He was true to the cause of culture. He was true to who he was. People loved this music and they loved B.B. King. B.B. King was a part of Memphis. B.B. King is a part of Anthony Amp Elmore. In fact, let me tell you my B.B. King story. Back in about in the, in the early 80s, me and my friend Tony Russell, who became a kickboxing champion, I was a kickboxing champion, we were coming from somewhere. We went into the bathroom and I noticed B.B. King in the bathroom at the airport. So I said, Tony, you know this man here? Tony said, no, I don't. I said, Tony, you don't know this man? And uh, and B.B. King was just looking and smiling. I said, Tony, that's B.B. King. And they hugged. And we all hugged. And, and we said, B.B., it was so nice meeting you and talking to you. And as I was leaving, B.B. King stopped me and said, hey, Amp, you didn't think I know but you are Anthony Alf Elmore, the kickboxing champion. I was so flattered to meet B.B. King because B.B. King is a man that stood for something. He stood for his people. He went to Japan. He went all over the world to perform. I'm going to close this lecture out in honor of B.B. King. B. B. My favorite B.B. King song is I Like to Live the love I sing about in my song. And he's talking about music is love and love is music and perfect harmony. And I'm going to close this lecture. I'm Anthony Amp Elmore and I will take you out with my favorite B.B. King song called I Like to Live the Love I Sing About. I remember in 1974, there was this girl named Deborah. Deborah was so pretty and boy I used to do karate and we listened to that song and Man, it was on. But anyway, let me go with the song. The B.B. King song. B.B. King, we honor you. We love you. And my lecture is, B.B. King and Black Rivers History. The King of the Loops. With the best suited, Anthony Alvaro. Have a nice day.
song for the Lord out in it. I like to live the love I sing about. 